Eric Stein. Hello? Are you still here? <laughs> Does God make sense all the time to you? It doesn't make sense all the time to me. So what do you do at those times that God seems not to be making sense? <laughs> How do you handle yourself? How do you handle his word? How do you handle... Look, what do you do when you add one plus one and in your own calculation is supposed to be two, but God said it's one? <laughs> Psalm chapter 55, verse 22. Cast thy burdens upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Ay, ay, ay. Cast thy burdens upon the Lord. He shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Listen to me, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen. I don't care the intensity, the index, and intensity, and whatever they call it, the forecast of the storm. It doesn't matter the calculation of the storm. It doesn't matter what they've all said. It's not going to consume you. It will not consume you. Now, now I am lost in his word. Me? Ah. Hmm, hmm. You know that song? That song. Um, I, I trade, I trade, I trade all my women of it. I'm trading my, I have traded my. Long time. I'm not trading it. I've traded it long time ago. Sing it, sing it, sing it. I'm, I'm trading my. Uh huh. I'm trading. I'm trading. Trading. I'm laying them down for the joy. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm trading my sickness. Oh, yes. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Okay, let's sing the first line of the chorus. Hey! Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That song is very powerful. I love that song. For those who are trading. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> but some of us have traded it. It's so it's gone. It's, with, it's in safe hands. I told you last week you are in safe hands. I told you last week you are in safe hands. There are people that don't want to see your face. They will see it on the newspaper. Hey, there are people that don't want to hear about you. They will watch you on television. Hey, my God. There are people that don't want to even see your, your brake light. They will see your brake light. They will see your full light. They will see your trafficator light. They will see everything in the name of Jesus. And if they don't like to even come close to you, no problem. If you pass a particular place, when they come there 10 hours later, they will still perf perceive your perfume. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It is not over until God says so. I said it is not over until God says so. Cast your burdens upon him. Upon the Lord. He shall sustain you. He shall never. I like the word. The word of God cannot be broken. He shall never. When God said, I will never. Now, now, any other thing after God has spoken is a lie. Are we together this morning? Any other thing that comes after God finished, spoken, after God ended speaking, is a lie. And it's a lie from the pit of hell. And I know who is talking. His name is the devil. He's the deceiver. 
Hallelujah, somebody. He shall never, never suffer the righteous to be moved. The righteous can move himself. The righteous can be in the middle of situation. But God said, I'm holding on to him. You will not be moved. He didn't say, I will not first suffer the perfect to believe. So relax. He didn't say you should be perfect. Uh, Lord, are we three together? So that some, the devil can be, you are you righteous? Are you right? Yes, you are. Because you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah, somebody. Yes. Thank you, Holy Spirit. What do I do when God does not make sense? When he appears not to be making sense? When things around me appear not to be making sense? My faith looks up to thee. Thou Lamb of Calvary, Savior divine. Now hear me when I pray. Take all my guilt, take all my bodies away. Oh, let me from this day be wholly done. This is, this today to us is a hymn. It, is, it, it was somebody's experience. Are we together? <laughs> to us today is a hymn. But it is somebody's experience. Can I quickly run through some hypotheses here? And so that you can have some things to brood over the, as I continue to talk. It is when you stop singing, you get to know who is not singing or who is spoiling the song in choir practice. Is it not true? Is it not true? Uh-huh. As long as you keep singing, you will hear another person's phone. I, oh, oh, my God. I'm talking to somebody. As long as you keep singing, you won't hear another person's own. Continue. Number two, continue and don't stop what you are doing so, so that you don't fall for side talks and fault finders. Because when you stop, you will hear them. But when you keep moving, you will not hear them. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. Just keep doing what you are doing so long it is good and it's not evil, and you are in the center of God's will. Praise the Lord, somebody. Can I shock you here? Can I shock you here? You only become the topic when you are on top. Oh, you, don't get, you didn't get that one. Did you get that one? You only become the topic when you are on top. It means that everybody is seeing you. Uh, hello. It means that you are obvious. <laughs> you are obvious. That is why... Mm, mm, mm. Now... Some time ago, I had a, a brother in Christ, a minister too, that any time our senior pastor then comes up and preach, he sits by my side in minister's chair, and he whispers into my ear, that verse is not correct. I said, shut up. And then we continue. And then we, the man of God, we keep preaching, keep teaching. He said, ah, the pronunciation of that Greek word is not correct. I said, shut up. And then, listen, if you do not understand how to, how to live through Storm, the side talk will distract you. You will be taken on a way and you will fall away by the side. Because there are always going to be side talks. Now, can I quickly tell you a story? Now, the story of a frog and a tortoise. A lion in the animal kingdom. They said that every of the animals should climb a mountain, a hill. And so, as they all agree that, okay, this is a competition. We are all going to climb the hill. The, the, the hyenas, the lions, the elephants, all of them, they were all there. The snails, all of them were there. Frogs, all the animals, name all of them, they were all right there. And now this is a contest in the animal kingdom. They want to climb this hill, climb this mountain. The first person that gets there wins the prize for the day. Okay, and then they put... So many people by the side to yell, to talk, to shout. Don't stop. Just keep shouting and calling their names. Mentioning their bad points. Mentioning their good points. Make sure you tell them things that will either get into their head to distract them, get into their head to slow them down. Just make, they planted so many crowd by the side. And the animals were right there right in front, by the side of the mountain, around the mountain, there were people with microphones, loudspeakers, shouting, yelling, jeering, saying so many things, good, bad, ugly things. And while they were all there, the, 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 the umpire blew the whistle, 
go. And everybody began to, to climb. They were climbing. Immediately they caught the name of one person. When they said lion, boo, he fell to the ground. Bah. Oh my God. And they call, they call him deer. The deer falls down. They call the elephant. The elephant fell down. They called many of the animals as they keep shouting, jeering. And they kept calling. One of them, it remained two. Two animals. One of them was the tortoise. That you know, the, the turtle. We call it tortoise. They call it turtle. Turtle. Well, 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 whatever you call it, it's okay. Now, so, 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 the turtle, <laughs> the turtle was there. And then here was the frog. If you understand very well, the frog jumps. And he can really jump and fly. And the tortoise don't have that kind of strength to fly. He goes gently. He goes quietly. He goes easily. It was already a success. The fact that even if tortoise end as number two, he was already a success. Everybody will praise him. That ah, ah, you, 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 Toto, you are now number two. Uh, so they kept on going. They kept on going. And they were shouting, jeering, doing everything. And they mentioned the name of the frog, mentioned his son's name, and said to him, your daughter just fell down from the, from the cliff. He, from the top, he came to the ground. Bah, he fell down. He was left with tortoise. And they kept calling tortoise. Those animals who fell down kept calling tortoise. They, they never wanted him to also get there. They wanted him to be on the same level with all of them. So that they can continue the competition again. They were shouting. They were calling. They were cheering. They were calling the name. Oh, Toto. They were saying, they said your daddy died a, a, a liar. They said your mommy was an arm robber. They, kept, they said so many things, I'm telling you. They said, oh, you don't know that your wife is a harlot. Don't you know? We remember the police are coming now. They are behind you. Look at the police. They are very close to you. They are going to grab you now and take you to jail. He was right there. Rising. He was going. He was going. And he got to the finish line. And they went close to him. They asked him, brought him to the interview. He was the man in town. He needed to win. In fact, he won the whole, the whole, the whole competition. And they asked him, what was your secret? He didn't answer. They asked him, how did you do it? He didn't say anything. Oh, they came, they came, they shook him. Are you dead? Don't you know? He brought out his head. I'm not dead. Why are you shaking me? He, did, he, he didn't say anything. They discovered that he was deaf. Oh, all along he was deaf. The only thing he heard was nothing. And then, and then, when he saw other animals going, climbing the mountain, he didn't hear the, on your mask, get set, go. He only followed. He only followed. He was able to read the, the, the instruction. Just get there and win the prize. He didn't know the rule. He didn't know the law. All he knew was just to get to a point and get to that place. But in all this, he didn't hear anybody talking. He didn't hear all the jeering, all the shouting, all the distractions, all the things that they were saying. He didn't listen. He placed his eyes on the plow. He that his eyes is on the plow, put his hand on the plow and look back. He's not fit for this race. This race is for one person. As you go, it is a personal race. As you keep moving, you are not ready to turn back. You are not ready to look side. Your mother may be here. Your father may be here. Your brother may be behind. Your children may be in front. Your wife may be with you. Your husband may be with you. But you are set on a goal. A city set on a hill that cannot be healed. Look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, you hear too much. Uh, yeah, too much hearing. <laughs> too much hearing. And you want to please everybody. Too much hearing. Too much hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. And it is good to hear, but hear the right things. Praise the Lord, somebody. Hear what will motivate you. Hear what will move you forward. Hear what will increase you. Do you know if you are someone that constantly, right from when you were young, and you constantly hear negative, negative, negative things about yourself, one day you will suspect yourself. <laughs> are we together this morning? I, I, am I preaching good this morning? You, sometimes you will be suspecting yourself. Do you know that was the strategy the devil used to get the 
get Eve in the Garden of Eden? Did God really say? He made Eve to doubt what she believed. He made Eve to doubt what she already received. What you received is what you believe. He, he made Eve to doubt. Did God really say? He didn't say, did, uh, he didn't outrightly come out and say, God did not say. He said, did God really say? Be careful when you begin to contemplate truth. Because when you start contemplating, you know this is truth. And you start contemplating, and should I? Should I not? The devil will give you reason not to follow. Praise the Lord, somebody. Praise the Lord, somebody. Just focus on what God has inspired you to keep doing. Are we together here? Can I shock you again? Only ripe fruit attracts stones. Only ripe fruit attracts stones. Bro, you may not value yourself. You may not think that you are even doing anything. As I'm here now, preaching like this. And you may, I may not even know. Oh my God, a woman of God told me this morning. He said, do you know that you are a library? And that, you know, you know when people begin to peep into the spirit realm and see what God has given you grace to also see. Look, you should appreciate God for that. There are people, I'm telling you now, they don't believe in you, but they don't believe in, in, in your ministry, don't believe in mission house, but as I'm talking now, they can, every morning, they don't have peace. They will wake up, they will peep into the website. They will go out. They will peep into the service. They will go out. Are people still there? Hey, listen to me. The, the king came and he peeped into the, 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 the den of lion. He says, Daniel, servant of the living God, servant of the most high God, has the God whom you serve continually been able to deliver you out of the mouth of the lions? He was not expecting to hear any voice in return. At this time, because those lions were too hungry, by the time they threw Daniel that the lions were hungry, their mouth was open. But the Bible says, in right from the den of the lions, a voice rose out. King, all king live forever. The God whom I serve continually has sent his angels. Oh my God, look at the one that shocked me more. And they have shut the mouth of the lions that they could not harm me. Amayada katabayada. Never forget that those you want to hear want to listen to you too. You never know. <laughs> Never allow anybody discourage you from serving and following Jesus. Never. No, don't give people the privilege. Don't give them that one. Never give attention to distractions. Feed your fear, your faith, and don't focus on your fear. Focus on your cause. Focus on your purpose. Praise the Lord, somebody. Praise the Lord, somebody. Can I quickly say something to you so that you can take this one home? You can take this one. It is not every disappointment that is a failure. Our mothers here, they understand what I'm talking about. They get this one clearly. It is not every disappointment that is a failure. It's not. It's not. <laughs> that, 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 a, that a young sister, my, my lecturer in school used to say this. He said, love is like a bag. You carry your love and you go and give it to sister A. And sister say, no, I don't want. I don't. He said, take your bag, give it to sister B. He said, and sister B said, no, 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 no. You are too short for my liking. I don't like this. Take it to sister C. Before you get to Z, you will discover the one that exactly has been waiting. And you are the exact person that he has been waiting for. Don't allow anything to make you stop. Don't allow anything to make you get discouraged. Keep moving. Tell your neighbor, say, keep moving. In fact, change it. Tell your neighbor, say, I'm on the go. Maladeke Boshada. When God appears not to make sense, what do I do? These are the things. This is the way to go. This is the way to go. In Luke chapter 5, I'm going to show you a story there. Luke chapter 5. Quickly roll through that. Luke chapter 5 from verse 1. From verse 1, Luke chapter 5, beautiful encounter here. The story is so beautiful. From verse 1, and it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Genesaret. Somebody say stand. 
And he saw two sheep standing by the lake. But the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. <laughs> Verse 3. And he entered into one of the sheep, which was Simon's. And he prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. It's just a little. Uh, not, I can preach this thing for a year, I'm telling you. The, every verse here is a message. Praise the Lord, somebody. Trust out a little from the land. And he sat down and he taught the people out of the sheep. In verse 4, and when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down two things. Launch out first, then let down. Let down your net for a cash. <laughs> and Simon said, stop it there. Just stop it right there. I know I borrowed you. I lent you my sheep to use it for your crusade and your revival. That is as far as it can get. Sir, please don't embarrass me and don't embarrass yourself. The last time I checked, I am already angry because uh, uh, some things have been happening and I am angry. Somebody said, cool down. <laughs> uh, there, there is an African adage or African proverb that says that anger does not give back to a good child. Have you seen any child of anger that is very beautiful? <laughs> Hallelujah, somebody. Look at the next one. Look at the next one. He said, And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have taught all the night and have taken nothing, nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when he had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break and they beckon upon their partners. Somebody say, where were the partners before? <laughs> they beckon on the partners which were in the other ships and they, that they should come and help them and they came and filled both the ships so that they began to sink. Verse 8, when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, depart from me for I am a sinful man. The first thing that he discovered about himself was that he was inadequate. Oh, Lord. Now, for he was astonished and all that were with him at the cash of the fishes which they had taken. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, fear not. The, re the only time Jesus will speak again after he said, let down your net for a cash. The next time he will speak was the word, fear not. Because fear has torment. From henceforth, thou shalt catch men. And the last verse there. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all, and they followed him. Now, let me speak. Jesus wanted to hold a revival service. He wanted to minister. He wanted to preach. He wanted to minister and talk the word of God. Please listen to me. And you are watching us right now. I speak over your life in the name of Jesus. And you that you are here, you will not give up so soon. Look at the word of God. G Peter toiled all night. All night can be likened to January to November. All night can be likened to January to December. I have toyed all night. Instead of me to cash, I lost. Because in the process of trying to cash good fishes and big fishes, you begin to cash those crazy ones. Somebody say crazy ones. Uh -huh. And those crazy ones will cut your net. They make your net look somehow unattractive. So you have to bring out the net and begin to sew it together. And tie it again. Oh, my God. Are you listening to me? There are many people, they are not fishes. They are net crashers and net breakers. And by the time they leave your net, all you need to do is to sew it back. 
sow it back. By the time you are done sowing back the net, listen, I beg you in the name of God, there is a cash for you. There is a cash for you. Look at the word of God here. Peter toiled all night. He couldn't even catch anything. And I'm sure he couldn't even catch crayfish. The crayfish, we also have some cash value. Mm -hmm. But he could because his own word said, we've caught nothing. Now, when we look at the statement of Peter, we see frustration. Are we together here? We see frustration. We see somebody that is bitter. Am I, am, am I talking here? We see somebody that is pained. Somebody that is like very, very frustrated, angry person. As a young boy, even till now, I like watching Jesus of Nazareth movies. And one of the, my best scenes is this particular scene when Jesus was taking his disciples and he was right by the sea. And he told Peter, launch out. And Peter was angry. In fact, you need to see Peter coming out from the, from the ship. That early morning, he was angry. He was shouting. James and John were calling him. He said, leave me alone. Crazy fishes, where did they go? Where did the fishes go to? He was angry with his brothers, angry with the fishes, angry with the sheep, angry with the net, angry with everything. I'm telling you, an angry person will give back to angry things. Have you seen somebody so angry? And then he takes the television, he breaks it. And then he goes to the, to the wall. He starts punching the wall. Pa, pa, pa. He goes, he, he, somebody angry? He goes to the gate. He gets, iron gate. Use his leg. Hit the gate. Boah! And the ash. I thought you were angry. Peter was an angry man. But the Bible says when Jesus came into his life, things began to change. Things began to change. This, this personality of Peter was still there all through his life. But Jesus was working on him. Jesus was working on him. At this point, I want to bring you to a point. And he was a very professional fisherman. He understood everything that has to do with fishing, at least to the best of his ability. After toiling all night, and he has come on the day, and Jesus finished preaching. Maybe at this time, it was already midday. People had troubled the waters. Even the crowd must have stepped inside the water. And the, the fishes had all gone based on normal fishing techniques. At this time, this was a very, very bad time to fish. It would have been good if the fish, if the, the sea was still, the water was still calm. But people, traders, many other ships have gone to trouble the waters. And this time around, Peter knew, based on his own experience, somebody say experience. When God wants to, when you are working with God, please drop your experience. Experience is good, but drop your experience when you are working with God. Because the Holy Spirit can bypass your experience. That after all said and done, you have tried this, tried everything, and nothing is working. It is only God that, that works for you. Praise the Lord, somebody. Jesus finished preaching. And this point in time, he said to Peter, launch out. Your net. Okay, that was not even the first one. That was not even the first instruction. Everybody look at me. I think the first instruction Jesus gave to Peter was, please, can you trust backward a little into the, into the water? Into the sea. At this point, Peter was angry. Because he, already, he, was, he has been angry even with the water. <laughs> was angry with everything. He was also angry with the water. Useless water anyway. You say I should push you inside. I'll push you inside the water. Don't you trust the ship with Jesus inside the water. And Jesus said, Peter, it's time. Launch out into the deep. He said, look. We have toiled all night. We have caught nothing. I just did, gave you a kind gesture. You have used my ship. That's okay. 
I didn't ask you to pay me anything. You can go. You can go. You don't, 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 don't raise my hope. You, that was what Peter was saying. Don't raise my hope. I have given up already even before you showed up. Don't worry about it. Nothing you do now can change anything. Do you see how we are face to face with our miracle and we justify our defeat? Are you hearing what I'm saying here? Face to face with his destiny. Face to face with what will change his life. Face to face with his miracle. Listen, God can bring you into the life of somebody to be a change agent in the life of that person. And you are thinking about your yesterday frustration. And Peter finally, he said, well, at your word, nevertheless. You know the meaning of nevertheless? Not the English meaning. My meaning. This dictionary is Paul Ibinogene. You know there's Michael West. This is Paul, Paul West. This is Paul West. Now, this is it. Nevertheless, even Peter, you know what that means? He said that things cannot go worse than this. Okay, it's all, I'm already less. I'm already on the floor. I'm on the ground level. So it can't even get worse than this. I didn't catch anything. So, okay. Nevertheless, because you say, let me do it. So, it, it, that word does not suggest that he believed in what Jesus said. He doesn't. He didn't believe in what Jesus said. That word was just to, to satisfy his rejection, to satisfy his defeat, to, 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 to massage his, his tears, uh, well, to, to arouse not empathy now, sympathy. Well, because you have said it, I will just never the less. I can't get worse than this. It can't get bad than Look, there are many people, it's not because they believe the word of God. They are like, I have nothing to lose. Have you heard that word? Nevertheless, here means I have nothing to lose. I've given up already anyway. So if it works, if it doesn't work, I walk away. <laughs> Look at how God surprised them. When God, because as far as Peter was concerned, he was, Jesus was not making sense. Hello? Bros, are we still here? Bros here. Jesus wasn't making sense. God wasn't making sense. If you read Bible from Genesis to Revelation, you will see many places in the Bible where it appears God was not making sense. One of them, I'll come back to this one to round up. Now, but one of them was, this was, these were God's people face to face with River Jordan. No, with the Red Sea. That was the first one, the Red Sea. And God told them, and Moses, Moses, ordinarily, he would cry to God. If, if it was due to prayer, we declare fasting and prayer. The Father, in the name of Jesus, what should we do? So Moses prayed. And God said to Moses, tell my people to go forward. Now, this, this is, <laughs> where, where is forward here now? Where is forward in this place? This, this is what I'm saying about this kind of God. Where is forward? You know, go forward. Forward where? This is Red Sea, sir. By this side is mountain. By the other side is mountain. Back, look at this fierce army. Everybody look at me. Look at this fierce army coming. The, 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 the Egyptian military. The children of the Pharaoh. Ah, you say go forward. I will just give you, my, give you the leadership role. Come and go the forward for us. Because I don't understand where is forward in this place. But the Bible says, Moses said, God, I don't understand what forward means. And are we together? Moses said, I don't understand what, what is forward. He said, okay, Moses, what is in your hand? He said, I have a rod now. It's a rod. Uh -huh. Use the rod and divide the sea. <laughs> hey. <laughs> oh, my God. Are, are you following me? Are you following me? Are you sure you are with us this morning? Where, where? This is a, it's, it's like another complication on top of complication. Rod, divide C. God, I don't understand what you are talking about. 
if you follow God with your common sense, you will not experience uncommon things. Are we together this morning? If you want to follow God, if you want to understand, if you want to enjoy uncommon things, miraculous, follow God with your faith. 